it, my smoking addiction is all, you know, when did it start? It started when I was, you know, 14, 13. And when? I was a teenager. What do they do? It's all about being accepted. Yeah, was my life hell back then? You know, I had thick glasses. Did I have a lot of kids teasing me about these Coke bottle glasses? You know, there. did I even have issues because of the abuse that was going on in my house? You know, I had a lot of things going wrong in my life, and I didn't have any nice people in, in my neighborhood. So, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to do whatever it takes to get accepted. You know, because the whole world's freaking against you. So, what did I do? I started smoking. The second, the second I started smoking, guess what? All of a sudden, everybody at school starting to accept me. You know, I'm starting to build friendships. I'm cool. You know, I'm willing to break a few laws. I'm taking some risks. Oh, she's cool. You know, developed a bunch of friendships. So then, you know, now I'm 51 and dealing with the smoking addiction and, and when's the time that I want to smoke all the time? When I have discussions with people that want to disagree with me. When I have this need to be accepted by people that don't believe in the same things as I do. And it's like, I don't need you to accept me. It's like, go live your life. You know, you're freaking killing me because... What you're doing is polluting the friggin' air that I breathe, so I'm kind of motivated to sort of, you know, hey, is there more of us that want our air clean? You know, is there more of us that kind of want to live a longer life? Is there more of us that want to sort of see life is worth living? I mean, right now, who wants to live? <laughs> you know, life is hell right now. So it's like, okay, we've got to create a world that's even worth living. Who's on board? You know? Hell, if, 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 this is, if this is the way life is going to be and you're going to pollute the air and you're going to create all these volcanoes and, I mean, you got to really see how these earth, earth changes are definitely caused by the way we live. You know, it, it, just look at the freaking rainforest. If that rainforest wasn't there, it will definitely affect our weather patterns. You put enough poison and toxin and, and you know, oil dispersants, guess what? It's going to have an effect on our water currents, which will definitely affect our weather. You know, you put these scalar waves and you throw beams down at the earth, you know, where you know it's sort of shaking up the planet, you know, vibrations do move the planet, you know, like you even take a magnet a really strong magnet on some metals that are you know oh like in the soil and the ground and you put a heavy magnet on that that's going to move the earth you know we have scalar waves i mean they they use some of this technology to be able to tell how what's down in the earth you know is there any oil down there well when they do that they're they're shaking a little bit of that earth up you get a big enough shake, it's going to create a vol an earthquake. You know, like, this is not rocket science. It's just information that the majority of us don't know. We think that these earth-changing, you know, nature is out of our control. No, it's us humans that are creating nature. <sighs> the big picture is, you know, like... It's definitely even in a universal level. We are like magnets. We tend to think that the universe, the stars and the planets have an effect on us. You know, like the moon is affecting our uh, tides. Well, we definitely are affecting that moon. <laughs> you know, it, it's karma. <laughs> Things that happen to the sun come back at us, you know, and it is a really deep, wild, bigger picture, but we're too busy looking at life through our little tunnel of knowledge, and we're like, oh my God, I found the answer to everything, and it's like, no, you only got a really small picture. You need to understand this small picture, this small picture, this small picture, this, I mean, you gotta put it all together. You gotta understand everything, and really, I mean, the information that I've gathered Technically, if you want to learn this in school, you've got to be in university from the day you're born and you got to be 800 years and graduate from every form of education to be able to get all of the information you need 
And when you put that much education in one course, I mean, these courses can all be condensed. And um, there's mo most, most of it's garbage, most of it's trash. Everything that, that, you know, most of the sciences that we are learning is trash. So, and you know, the only way you know that it's trash is because one science contradicts another science. And you have to put definitely a piece of the puzzle. You have to notice what a contradiction is. And that's kind of what kind of guided me is um, for some odd reason when I was really young, I could see contradictions pretty easy. I was probably trained at a very young age to notice a contradiction because I knew what love was. I knew it was a good feeling. I knew it's do good to you, do good to me, you know, respect the planet, you know, like I kind of had this knowing when I was a baby what love was all about. And, you know, when parents are beating the crap out of me and saying that this is love, it was like, okay, the medical world doesn't know anything. You know, the psychological world doesn't know anything. You know, parents don't know what they're talking about. The church doesn't know what they're talking about because what they're doing is wrong. So then you kind of view from, okay, they're contradicting. You know, they're saying one thing, but actually doing another. It's like, even in the Bible, they say, judge something by the fruit of, of, you know, the end result. And I didn't know this, you know, I could see contradictions, but it's not like I lived in those, con you know, I, I was buying into it. These people were manipulating me, you know, so I end up being fooled in their game well, I kind of knew myself, but I kept thinking, hey, myself is wrong. You know, I, I believed everybody that I was wrong. There's something wrong about me. You know, I had this voice inside my head that says, hey, this is the way it should be. But the world kept saying, you're wrong, you're wrong. So I kept saying, okay, I'm wrong. I, you know, so let me do it your way. You know, so I did it everybody else's way. And it wasn't until I'm like 51 where it's like, okay, <laughs> I did it your way. <laughs> You know, I was open-minded. I believed I was totally wrong. And it wasn't until I had a lot of life experiences where I ended up, well, they're judging me to lose my mind, but I kind of think that, no, I found my mind. <clears throat> and it's like put this whole massive piece of the puzzle together. And, you know, just my experience in raising four kids and seeing that their interests with you know the science interest it's like I got into so many different levels of science that it's not really normal to know as many sciences as I have but it was like being involved in my kids and their experiences that kind of guided me down the path that I was at and uh, ultimately the sciences that I've seen is you know when we see in this Bible that they were living 900 years it's like Okay, why did I find the science that has been curing all cancer, AIDS, mental illnesses, addictions, you know, like <laughs> my smoking addiction, I, I know definitely well what's causing it. And I got to get rid of that cause in order to unfold, get rid of that addiction. And as soon as I keep thinking I need to be accepted by everybody, then I'm always going to be dealing with some kind of addiction, the pain. The pain ages me. I wasn't aging until I, I, I seen this big picture and I started seeing, oh my God, these people are really trying to kill me. It's as soon as I gave up on, hey, I'm not aging. I ain't grown old. I'm going to live. You know, that was the mentality I had in my mind. And up until the time I was like 47, I wasn't aging. But it's like, yeah, I started crying a lot because it's like, oh my God, I can't believe you'd be so painful. I can't believe you would do that much harm to me. And, you know, you end up crying a bit. And guess what? That'll give you a few wrinkles. It'll kind of make you have these bags under your eyes. But <clears throat> um, it can all be reversed. But you have to get rid of what sins you, <laughs> what sins you have. And those are my sins is got to get rid of the smoking. What's the cause of my smoking? voice my opinion too much with other people, get engage in conversations that are pointless. You know, if somebody's going to be stubborn in their narrow view, don't even engage with them. You're just asking for it. You know, these people will attack you emotionally. They will break your spirit. They will tell you that don't listen to yourself. 
my personal opinion is yeah I kind of know that there is a God and you know there there is good information out there but you're only going to listen it through your intuition got lots of other videos about that you can go and look in the history that's my spiel on this topic for today